Hey, what's up, you guys? This is Sheila Bila coming to you with another review of Tyler Perry's Sisters season, is it six, episode 14? I think it'll be in the description below. Yeah, this episode was pretty good. Um, It got a little boring, but then it got better. <laughs> anyway, yeah, don't hesitate to like, comment, and subscribe. Um, If you get anything out of my content, um, the more and more you like my videos, the more they go through the algorithm and more, more people will start to view my content because I am a growing channel and I would love for you to be a part of my channel. Y'all, I really do like reviewing this show with y'all because y'all be giving perspective. When I tell y'all, y'all remember a lot of stuff that I forget. Y'all think about stuff that I don't even think about. I'm telling you, like, look, I ain't never took no DNA tests. Never, but my brother took <laughs> my why I'm telling my business. My brother took a DNA test and it did say that he was 99.9% that child father. Even though I said the boy looked just like you, you know, you gotta get that DNA because child, they say you feed them long enough, they start looking like you. So I never even thought about a DNA test saying 99.9%. You are not, but for some reason, I feel like I saw that somewhere, but y'all said that ain't possible and I didn't do no research. So I'm going to take y'all words as truth. You know what I'm saying? If y'all said, I ain't never seen no DNA test that said 99.9, .9, you are not the father. Then I mean, Hey, it is what it is. And also y'all brought something else to my attention. When it came to Sabrina, and which I knew this, you know what I'm saying? I knew that Robin, where is Robin? Robin ain't coming back. Robin said, you know what? I'm doing other movies. I ain't got time for Tyler Perry right now. He took a hiatus. But, um, yeah, um, that Robin and Sab Robin and Andy had paid Sabrina's bail. See, because I got thrown off when he kept talking about you going to jail. You don't care about, about going to jail. And so I'm just going off of that. I didn't, and, and when y'all brought it to my attention, I was like, you know what? You sure right. He didn't even pay that lady bill. So you paid that man bill on behalf of that lady. So that man was the one that was going to be going to jail, which is Maurice, i.e. Maurice, that man. He was going to be going to jail and not Sabrina. So why they thought, see, that's what I'm saying. That be that bad, that bad, B-A-D, that bad writing. You know what I'm saying? That's that bad writing. Because it's like, how you going to say that this lady is going to jail when you didn't even do nothing with her bun? Like, well, how's she going to go to jail? Because you revoking people bond. The only time, what, it would have been different if Robin or or, 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 or what's the other lady's name? Andy, re, you know, revoked, you know, revoked the bail or whatever. Sent the letter down there to the courthouse and talking about I want my money back. But they did. You doing that. So it's Maurice. And thank y'all for that. See, that's why I love y'all. That is why I love y'all. Because y'all be, be helping me out. Y'all, let me tell y'all. Tyler Perry had you running around here in circles. <laughs> running around in circles. Yes, in a circle. A whole 360, not even the 180. Not to get back to where you started from. Chill, a circle, you be running around here dizzy as I don't know what. Anyway, so, now that we done got that, child, let's get into this episode. So, girl, let me tell y'all, this episode done picked up where it done left off, where Zach done busted, that baby was screaming, ah! Zach done bust up in the room in that house and um beat that man. He went to welling on that man, child, and beat that man up. And then his goons came in and jumped on Zach. I said, Ooh, so y'all gonna jump on Zach like that? But we already know our girl, Fatima. And then I, I'm glad Fatima is on this show because she did bring life to this show. I agree with y'all. And I know y'all, we can thug it out in the comments. I agree with y'all. I believe Fatina, Zach, and Karen, that whole triangle brought this show to a whole nother light. I agree with y'all. And I think, and they, they can be used on the show, but I'm like, they got their own show. Like, they got their own show. Like, all of this, this situation right here, could have been on their own show, which I wish it would have been. They run around here talking about Connie. We could have had this here on their show. I mean, y'all want Zach. I mean, they good, on, but I just be trying to, I be trying to connect ties. That's all I be trying to do. I be trying to connect ties to see, you know what I'm saying? Okay, this, 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 that, but it is what it is. But anyway, so child, we'll, we'll thug that out in the comments later. But child, Fatima done pulled out the heater. 
And she was like, y'all better get off my man. Get off my mans. Where you where, where my mans at? Get off my mans. Okay? Because y'all not gonna be jumping on him like that and think I'm gonna stay here. So, you know, she shot the she shot it. Pow! And everybody like, oh, hold on, they get the duck. <laughs> they get the duck. Why the first thing you do when you hear a gunshot, you duck? You don't be nowhere near the shot, but you get the duck. Child, one time I was <laughs> I was at the gas station pumping gas. Pow! I'm like, get down, duck. But anyway, that's neither here nor there. This is not about me. But yeah, they got the ducky. And um, she told I didn't get over there to the side. And then Fatima get up in their face, like, do you know who I am? She like, he like, no, nah, I don't know who you is. Chad, I mean, he really, he ain't never seen you before. So then she pulls out her phone and she makes her phone call. And um, she said, yeah, you know what the name um, BD or OD or OB, whatever the name is. You know who he is? And, um, you know, Madam on the side, like, yeah, you know, we didn't hear her say this, but we can just imagine. She was like, yeah, I know that nigga. All right. So then he, cause then when, then when she say, roll your hands up, roll your, roll your sleeves up or whatever. Then she made the phone call all that stuff. Right. And then that phone said, ring, thing, ring, thing, ring. Okay. Check your pockets. So, child, he done checked his pockets. Oh, what, what? Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, 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 I'm sorry. Okay. So, then, Zach over there confused. Zach over there dazed and confused. <laughs> Zach over there dazed and confused. Like, what is going on? Meanwhile, the baby that came at the back with his... <laughs> that baby said, Fatima, you ain't the only one that got guns. I got my little water gun with me too. Let's get these dudes because they've been beating me up this whole time. I want to get them too. He put, he come out with his heater too. <laughs> the baby coming out with the heater. But anyway, but you know, his was a little water gun. Y'all seen it. So Zach trying to, you know, get up, get his little son or whatever. And then Zach looking like, oh my God, what is going on? And then Zach walks out with the baby. And then the um the dude was like, yeah, I'm sorry. She said, I ain't the one you need to be saying that you sorry to. Yeah, you need to say you sorry to somebody else. Chad, we sing this song at church. Now I'm finna divert real quick. We sing this song at church. Victory, victory shall be mine. Victory, victory shall be mine. If I hold my peace, let the Lord fight my battle. Victory, victory. Chad, Fatima said, victory, victory is mine. Cause if I pull out my peace, let Adam fight my battle. Victory, victory is mine. I said, Chad, Fatima done pulled out the peace. And she done called on Madam. And Madam done sent 50 them goons <laughs> to the house. I said, Chad, y'all better duck. <laughs> they walking out. Zach like, what is going on? I don't know them. Do you know them? And Fatima was like, yeah, you know what I'm saying? They, they, they work for my family. She said, I don't like to be calling my family like that. I don't like to be calling my family like that, but... You know what I'm saying? They work, they, you know, they work for my family. And um, that dude, OBDB or whatever his name was, he's in my, my, you know, the girl run that game. And now he know better. Don't be putting your hands on me. Don't be putting your hands on this baby. Don't put your hands on my man, my man, baby. Since you want to beat up somebody, especially a little bitty baby that, that ain't got no, you know what I'm saying? And then Fatima talking about the baby smell real bad. Like, y'all doing this baby wrong, wrong. Zach over there talking about I'm finna pull over, get to the front of the car. You know, like, he get on up here to the front seat because they was in the back seat. Oh, child, I'm skipping. I'm skipping. I'm going to, I'm going, I guess I'm going ahead of this because at the end of this thing, uh, we're going to get back there. But look, at the end of this, Zach was trying to help me get in the car. But we're going to get there because I did take a picture of it. That's why I'm like, what's going on? But anyway, so here we are. See, I jumped ahead, but we're going to get right back. We're going to get to that in a minute. So here we are. Um, what's this girl named Danny? She on her date. Her, her man's been sitting there for three hours. They been having good conversations. She look, they he talking about um, can they do another date and all this stuff. And that he really didn't want the day to end. And she look up. She try to find her friends. Oh, they was talking about her working in the courtroom. Talking about can you be, how can you be so pessimistic about, um, people that she dating and she said she just cautious about people that she dating or love or all this other stuff because I guess she deal with so many different types of people and people and so many different types of attitudes so she just need to depend on the people that she really 
she have to handle certain people with caution, I guess. You know, if that's what she was saying. But um, yeah, then they look up, they see that they friends. She's like, Where my friends at? I don't know. Where my friends at? I don't know. So they look over and then they both their friends sitting over there back at the table. So they decide to get together to make a joke, to make it seem like it was a bad day, but really it was a good date. So yeah, that was the plan for them. Now back over here in the car. So here we are now. I can pick up where I left off because I started running my mouth too much and we back here. So the baby in the back seat sleep. Child, look at him sleep. He when I tell you he trying to keep his eyes tight because he don't want to mess up his scene. When I tell y'all this baby is acting, y'all need to get him a raise. Cause for him to keep his eyes closed that long. <laughs> anyway, look, baby, doing you like that, baby Michael. Anyway, so. Zach told me he got to pull over to pull up to the front. So Fatima gets to the front seat. They put the baby down in the back seat and then they get to talking like, what you think that they did? That's when she brought up the baby smell and all that stuff, right? And um, Fatima talking about what I don't... Zach says, what do you think they did to BD or OD or whatever his name was? Fatima talking about, uh, I really don't want to know. I don't. I mean, shoot, he over here beating up on his little baby. So he, he going to get what he going to get. So she said, the little information, the better. I feel the same way because I don't want to know. I don't care to know. Oh, and mind you, this is so sad too. Mind you, before um, 5011 men had came over there to the house, the lady nosy neighbor downstairs said that she called the police, but they ain't going to even come. You know what I'm saying? That's messed up, right? But then on the next episode, the police going to come to Zach's house, but y'all won't even come over there when that baby was over there getting beat. But that's neither here nor there, but we're going to get back to this thing right here. So, um, yeah. And that's when Fatima said, I don't like to really get my family involved and stuff like that. But it just felt like that was something that she had to do. Me and that them dudes, OBDB, who, whatever his name is, he worked for her cousin. So, you know, that's just what you're going to get. And so then Fatima is just like, I can't believe this is happening to him. That's a little baby. She said she didn't think she, she had to see it for herself because she didn't think that it was that bad. And she was like, oh, my God, that's what you had to go through. Zach was like, look. He with us now. I don't want to relive my past. I'm just happy we got him with us. And ain't we? And he ain't going nowhere. And Fatima was like, dang, that's what your mama did? Like, your mama, she was, he was just like, look, you're not going to have me crying in the car. <laughs> I'm not going to cry in the car. So let we, let's just focus on getting him home and cleaning him up so he don't never have to go through nothing like that again and i concur and i really hope that he keep this baby i mean even though he doesn't hey hold on wait now i got to i got to bring this up now i don't know now y'all help me out with this now i don't know if this i guess this was on sisters when was it sisters or, or is it Tima? when um he wrote out that contract for that girl and was like i'll give you was it what fifteen thousand dollars or however many thousand dollars to see the baby whenever he needed to or whatever whatever and then she was like shoot i'll just give you the baby ain't that what happened and he was like oh okay so if she already has if she already said like you give me this money you can come get him i ain't got it. and you just as long as as long as that keep feeding her with this money I, what's she mad for like, why you gonna bring the police over to this man's house on the next episode if you had already said, you know what I'm saying? You just keep giving me this money. You can just have a little baby. So, anyway, just help me out with that, y'all, because you know y'all be knowing. So, am I right or am I wrong? So, okay, yeah. Now, over here, back over there at the restaurant, uh, at the date, they ended up doing this thing. I can't believe I came out here. This one was one of the worst dates. And this girl over here, you know, you talked about yourself for the whole time. And, I, you know, they were just going back and forth. So while they going back and forth, the girl's like, uh-uh, we finna go. Like, nope. And tell me, <laughs> he gonna talk about, she talked about me and she talked about the friends too. Then like, hold on, who you talking about me? <laughs> anyway, so after then, after all they, you know, that little chaos or whatever, he said, you know what? I just want to take you right now and go home and make love to you. I was like, why you always got to go there? Like, why we always, can you take her home and get to know her? Or can you call her on the phone and get to just, just get to know the girl? 
do is that you know what that's why the dating scene is so messed up i've been hearing people over and over and over again talking about how dating is just a hookup nobody dates anymore and the reason why nobody dates anymore is because they got these shows like this on tv time but i just want to go home and then make love make love don't nobody talk about nothing they don't even know each other name like that like that but you just want to go home here come on talk to me call me on the phone ask me how was my date Ask me where I used to live 10 years ago. Figure out my life so I can figure out yours. Anyway, so that's neither here nor there. So then after everybody realized it was a joke, and um, Danny was like, Chad, I almost took my earrings off, and I was going to whoop you and him or whatever. So I thought that was really funny. And then they didn't want the night to end, so then they ended up talking about... Um, what was they talking about? Taking the bus? taking a bus somewhere am i skipping and and oh they was talking about they was drunk and how they gonna get home and they was talking about the girl said we can take ourselves home we okay the dude was like well um we could catch the bus and like bus what or who but what me bus not in my pink suit looking like my arms pink pants no you ain't doing this no and so the other girl is just like, okay, well, yeah, that's something different because I guess the name of the movie, the, the show was something new. So um, they was like, yeah, you too bougie to take the bus? And actually, Andy, yeah, I'm bougie. And then um, they start talking in this London accent. The boy, yeah, yeah, all of that. Just being real cute. Eventually, the girls ended up caving in and they ended up getting ready to get on the bus, right? All right, so that happened. Now we have this whole scene with Hayden. Hayden trying to call around to find out where Tamaria at. So he ain't getting nowhere. And he gets a knock at the door. For some reason, he thinks it's Tamaria. So he starts straightening up his shirt, child. Lo and, below, he, lo and behold, he opened up that door. It's Gary. I said, so is this what y'all going to be? Y'all just going to be two peas in a pod every scene? Like, why are y'all... I mean, I don't want to buy lose a job or nothing, but can't y'all do something else? So pretty much Gary come over there to get the papers. So um, so Hayden can get his annulment filed. And my thing is, why Gary got to do this? I guess Gary don't feel like Hayden will turn it in. So Gary going to make sure he do it. I'm like, that's a grown man. If he want to stay married, let him stay married. And they talking about, you know, she got, he got it bad. And he talking about he really felt some for her and all this stuff. And then they bring up that Gary just is worse than him and all that stuff. And he talking about you was like that old Fatima, you know, all of that. And he talking about that Andy really like him. And then Hayden says now Andy is on a date because he overheard Fatima and, and Andy when they, they was in they uh, what kind of ears do he have for him to hear all the way through they door to know that she was on a, a when they in the office talking about that i'm like do you got because i know he had their phone tap do you got a wire uh, some underneath in the desk like anyway but he said he overheard them talking about her being on this dating app and um and hayden said that he can go and pull up the girl profile to see the dudes that, you know, she been hooking, that's been liking her. And apparently Gary said, no, you can't. And then Hayden said, so you done already done it, which I'm assuming he probably already have. But Gary really feels like Andy really loves him and he ain't going, she not going to do nothing to jeopardize it or whatever. But really, they in the same boat. Y'all are like two peas in a pie. Y'all like mirror meets mirror. Like y'all are mirror images of each other. Y'all over here stalking because um, Hayden said he done rolled by the girl house and Gary stalking too because he cannot never stay at his own job. He always over any job riding around outside her building. You know what? I just made that part up. But I do know he always at her job trying to figure out what she doing. So, I mean, yeah, they are two peas in a pot. Like, they are, like, one and the same. They want girls that really don't want them. Now, Andy may want Gary, but she, right now, she ain't feeling him like that, like this. So, you know, but Gary still say he gonna go over and file them papers. So, he won't be married no more. And then, this part was, 
it was funny, but it was kind of corny at the same time because Hayden was looking at down and Gary pulls out his phone to call Hayden. And I'm like, I mean, I asked the same question Gary had asked. Like, you ain't got that nigga number say, like, you just gonna answer the phone. Hello? And he right there in the room. Like, he 10 feet away. How you doing in your face? Oh, Tamara, baby. I'm like, he right. Like, he right. He right there. Are you that love struck to where you can't hear this man inside your house? And normally, when the phones are that close together, there is an echo. So, you didn't hear the echo. <laughs> Anyway, you know what? This ain't me. This is Tyler Perry and his new writers. So that's when Gary like, ah, ha, 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 ha. It's a joke or whatever, whatever. Like, you ain't got my number, say. He told me, get on up out of here. Apparently, do we or do he not? Because that was ridiculous. Anyway. So y'all see this, the setup, right? Y'all see this scene was the setup. Because I synced it. And I know y'all smart. Y'all seen it too. So Karen on the phone and Karen calls Pam. And did Karen call Pam or did Pam call Karen? What's they, they on the phone together, right? And so um, Pam, I'm trying to get it right because I really don't remember how to get into the conversation with went. But Karen has said something to the effect of she hungry and... um. She asked Pam to go get her something. No, she said she was hungry and she about to get ready to go to the store. So maybe, maybe Pam called Karen. What you doing? I'm hungry. I'm about to go to the store. Because why would Karen be? You know what? I'm spending too much time on who called who. The point is, they on the phone. Karen said she hungry. She about to go get something to eat. Pam said it's like 11 o'clock at night, 11 p. She said, ain't but another 11. No, it's too late to be going out. Karen told me it ain't nothing but 11 p.m. Child, that's like almost a new day. That's like, yeah. Anyway, so um, Karen, Karen said you gonna go get something. To eat. You gonna go. You gonna go. You gonna go and get me something to eat. Pam said she ain't going, but Pam did say uh, my rent. My rent is almost due, and Karen said, but I gave you your check. So dang, what you do with your check that you gotta? You ain't got. She's anyway. Yeah. Anyway, because if you already paid your rent. How is it almost due? But then she said, I gave you your check. And then she said, what about the next two weeks? And then she said, what about the next month when I got to pay my rent again? So your rent ain't almost due, is it? I be spending too much time trying to figure out what's... Anyway, so um, Karen said, you need to go file unemployment. I said, you know what? I will not work for Karen ever in life. I will not work. How in the world you didn't take this check from Zach because you stubborn. You didn't want no help from um Aaron because you stubborn. You got you think you got this going. You think you can do all of this stuff, big sister almighty, right? So you can handle everything, but you the one that didn't file, you didn't have insurance on your building. So you wasn't even thinking about the fact that you're gonna have to pay your employees if disaster were to happen to your building. And now you're going to sit up and tell this girl to file unemployment. I mean, that is what she should do, but it's almost like Karen didn't care. We're going to file unemployment. Well, I can't do nothing for you. You won't go to the store for me, so I can't. <laughs> like, what? What the world? Okay. What is it? Quit, quit pro quo? Pre quo? <laughs> quit. I, and I just went over this. Quit pro quo? I give you, you go to the store for me and I give you two weeks of, of pay or whatever. Anyway. So I'm just like, Karen, you could care more. You know what I'm saying? You know how they say I could not care less. You could care more, really, because this girl still gotta get by. And then I'm like, well, if she can't pay her rent, Karen, how you gonna be able to pay your rent? So what you gonna do in that situation? And I'm thinking about Karen and her rent. So I don't know, but she being real mean right now, and Pam saying that. Karen is being being real mean, and they get out of the phone, and Karen's still gonna end up heading down there to that grocery store. Child, girl, I guess when them cravings get to calling, cause she says she ain't calling Aaron, she really done with him. So I guess when yeah, when you get pregnant, you gonna need somebody to run them errands when you when you ain't got nobody to go. All right. 
So then the girls, they're waiting on the bus. The boys, they go across the street and they get them some flowers to put in their hair. A lot of the girls are cold. Um, the dudes put their jacket. Well, Andy, the only one that didn't have no jacket put over her, maybe because her shoulder's too high and the jacket won't go over the shoulders like that. So Andy looking like she real cold. Um, oh, there was also a little moment where I think his name was it Richard. Richard was talking to Sabrina and Sabrina, you could tell she was worried about, um, her case that was coming up and she didn't want to really get into detail about it, but the dude going to take, he like did a gesture with his hand from his, over her mouth or from her mouth and threw it out in the atmosphere and to my, he taking her problems, throwing them away or something like that. And, um, he just see that she's a good person and he has a, a feeling that she a good person because he got that type of intuition to know if people good or bad. So I guess that's a good thing. I don't know. Um, but anyway, they wait on the bus. They get the flowers. They put them in their hair and all that stuff. And Andy don't want to get on this bus. She like, oh, what, well, uh, what, on um, bus, what? Like, she like, no, uh, uh, uh. So they on the bus. And then this, I actually... I actually thought this was good because we really don't know a lot about Andy and her backstory. So come to find out, um, the reason why Andy has so much anxiety about riding on these buses is because when she was younger, and why Tyler Perry always got to have a bus? What was that movie he was on when it was on that bus? Okay, that's neither here nor there. See how my mind just be jumping? All right, so back on Andy. Andy says that she really has this thing about riding on buses because when she was younger, her mom used to take her to school on a bus and then she would have to hurry up and catch the bus to go to work. Her and her father and her and her father were still together because he asked about the father and he, she was like her and her father were still together, but they worked so much. They really couldn't spend as much time like that. But then her, she, her, cause I always wonder where was her parents at? So kind of find out her father is, has passed away and Andy tries everything to just to make sure her mom is good. So that was good to know about Andy because I really didn't know nothing about her. And she was, you know, tearing up and she was really getting emotional about it. And then the dude, he talking about, I just want to kiss you right now. And then he reaches over the chair. I'm like, cause he said, what a, could it be? Can we do it on the third date? And then she was like, well, yeah. Then he reach over. I'm like, come on, put your face back, put your face back. Like really? And so she's like, hold on, wait, this ain't what well, you said the third date. Okay, so we count dates in one night. So they at the restaurant was a date. They took a walk to get to the bus. <laughs> now they on the bus and that's a date. Child, bye. I don't know. I don't like that pushy stuff. I mean, he, ugh, anyway. So they got that out the way. Then they going to end up going a date till later. Oh, they also having a barbecue at the man house later too. I forgot to tell y'all that, but they going to have a barbecue later. Um. Now they get over there to Danny and the dude took the, the rose and put it in Danny's hair. The only thing I could really focus on was Danny trying to put that rose back in her hair. Because I was like, girl, why don't you just put it in your lap? It don't have to be in your hair like that. But he gets to talking about, you know, things that she went through because, of course, he heard everything from her conversations because they parked right beside each other. And um, he she was like, so you know all of that and all that and... He was like, yeah, and, and he seems, and he said that she's very beautiful. He's just giving her positive affirmation. She's a 10. And then and Danny said she don't think that about herself. And he tried to say, well, why you should? He, she said, no, I think I'm a 15. Allie, you. And I was like, I know that's right, Danny. Know who you are, honey. I am a 15, 20, 30. Uh, you can't even, you can't even put me on a scale because I'm, I'm, I break it. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah. And, um, yeah. So, they they like each other, but Danny still puts in her. And this is what I'm thinking in my head. She's still on the reserve with him because of Preston. That's what I'm thinking. But, yeah, he gives her positive affirmations about she's beautiful, she's this, she's that, she's that, and all that stuff. And then she said, brings up the fact that, yeah, he seemed too good to be true. And he says they've already told, they've always told him things like that back in his, back in college, like all of them, that they were too good to be true. And in my mind, I'm like, well, if y'all too good to be true, why y'all divorced? So ended up, they ended up talking about somebody named Coach Brown. Coach Brown taught them everything they know. And he was, you know, taught them how to be the man that they are today. And I was like, dang, y'all didn't have no daddies to teach y'all that. So the coach, I mean, cause we do get a lot of influence from different people in our lives, coaches, teachers, whatever, but the main 
but the main presence should have been a father, but that is neither here nor there. Um, but yeah, then they talking about even on his deathbed, the coach Brown has sent a letter to the people, uh, everybody that he's ever coached and told them to meet up, and he gave them one speech about something I can't quote it, and um. Then Danny brings up the fact, like, so if y'all so good, where y'all, why y'all all divorced, but y'all ex-wives and Coach Brown said, man, F that B, because I guess they was too good for her anyway. I don't know. But I'm like, if this man, you know what, that's neither here nor there. All right. So that's pretty much it. The bus stopped. <laughs> Danny said, no, no, keep going. No, no. I said, Danny, come, no, excuse me, Andy, Andy, no, 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 come down there. I said, Andy, it's going to be okay. Like, she scared me. And that man said, y'all get off my bus. I'm tired. Like, the bus stops here. I got to go. I got to go to to turn this bus in. Like, my shift is over. So, um, Andy is frantic. They like, come on, come on, get out the bus. So, they get out the bus. And that man time I shoot, I'm tired. He drive on now. And Andy said, well, I'm calling a ride share. You going to do that? You going to call the ride? Yeah, I'm calling for my girls. You going to call one for us? No, I'm not calling one for y'all. Y'all knew we was going to be out here in the middle of nowhere. Y'all should have had a ride share waiting on us when we got out. Good man. You know what I'm saying? What y'all going to think? Y'all going to walk back to the... Come on. Anyway, so they lead good men. And they walk on. They walk on and they said they had a good night with three good dudes in Atlanta. But them people didn't call y'all no ride share. They just had y'all there in the middle of nowhere trying to figure out how y'all going to get y'all next move. And they asked for their jackets back. And that man going to tell me, you can make it to your ride share. <laughs> I said, how he going to tell you? Sabrina, she can make it to her ride share. You take your coat back. Anyway, so huh, I guess they going to see them people again. And these are going to be the new love interests of andy danny and sabrina i mean it was cool to get something new to have a new take on what's going on because we've always said that we never really seen them on no dates so they finally had a date instead of you know going home and get jumped up and down on top of um yeah did i miss something if i did y'all it is what it is so now Zach and Fatima, they back at the grocery store because they got to get some stuff for the baby. They got it. Zach, tell me, I can't believe this baby still wearing pampers. This dude, like, five years old. Ain't he, like, five? And he's still wearing pampers. Like, that's crazy. And they just like, yeah, you know. And they just, because it's a real, like, this is a down situation. Like, nobody, Zach is happy that he has his son. Fatima is happy. But at the end of the day, it's a sad moment because this baby has went through everything and they have to do everything in their power to get this baby, you know what I'm saying, back right, like, get him out of that trauma phase. And it's going to stick with him for the rest of his life because look, he's at. All right, so they over here getting pamphlets and stuff. Now, y'all seen the setup, right? Because Karen had to go to the store too. Yeah. So while they in the store, they end up looking like, like oh, my God. Dun 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 dun! Look at Karen. <laughs> look at Karen. I gotta go get me some bleach. <laughs> Child, I'm just looking in this girl cart. Is that bleach ammonia? Anyway, so apparently Karen just looking like oh, so we meet again in the store. And ain't this so funny because when Zach and Fatima had first started dating, well, they really weren't official, official. They ended up seeing Karen in the store too. Ain't it something how everybody come back full circle when they start meeting them stores? But anyway, y'all, this is Sheila Bila. Y'all like, comment, and subscribe. And let me know what y'all thought about this episode. I mean, I thought it was pretty good. It did kind of get a little boring, but it picked back up um, later. Um, I was going to ask y'all something. I forgot what it was. I was like, let me ask them this question and see what they think about it. But I forgot what I was going to ask y'all. Because y'all know y'all be knowing stuff that I don't really pick up on. But um, yeah, other than that. Oh! Well, this ain't the question I was going to ask y'all. But I hope they not going to make Karen. Child, they know how to make Karen mean. And I just be like, can we not have her mean? 
but she gonna stay mean and she i hope i don't know but anyway y'all again i probably forgot a lot i wish i know i did try to pay when i write jesus love y'all y'all have a great day bye i'm trying to still remember what i was gonna ask y'all but i can't and i've been on this thing too long trying to figure out what i was gonna ask y'all i don't know all right bye y'all